And the city's police monitor has joined Pano and the Fraternal Order of Police as they try to have a say in how the consent decree is carried out in New Orleans. And Susan Hudson joins us this morning with more on that effort. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It is a sweeping, large, huge document. Um, just your observations and your thoughts on it. Um, there's a lot of good parts in this, obviously. Um, several several um, parts of the New Orleans Police Department need revision, reform, and change. And this document uh, reflects on a lot of those different areas, training, um, policies, use of force. And so it's a, there, it's a good, good document with a lot of good information in it. The problem is um, the document also gives, it, the, the document is all about monitoring the New Orleans Police Department. Well, in 2008, the voters went to the poll and voted 77% overwhelmingly to have the police monitor's office, my office, monitor the, the NOPD. But instead, this agreement actually gives our duties under city law to the NOPD itself and this consent decree monitor. So we don't feel our voice was heard and we have intervened in the action for just that reason. And Susan, you have talked about getting more money for your office uh, almost since day one to try and do a better job of monitoring. Do you think that the consent decree may be a recognition of some sort that your office is inadequately funded or, or staffed to really f do the job? Or do you think that it should have uh, possibly addressed some of the issues you've been trying to discuss over the years? It should have addressed the issues that we've been trying to, to talk to the city and the Department of Justice about for two years. Because I wasn't even on the job in May of 2010 when I first started meeting with the mayor and the Department of Justice about these issues. I came to New Orleans specifically to do that um, and have been talking to them um, since for two years now. Um, so in every other consent decree, and remember I came from Los Angeles, which was under a consent decree as well. Every other consent decree in which there is a local police oversight agency, that consent decree has strengthened that agency and provides and has provisions within it to do that, both as to resources and as to duties and power. That's not within this document. When you brought these concerns to U.S. Justice Department officials and basically said, hey, remember me? Remember what the voters wanted? Did you forget about me? Was it that they weren't aware of your office and what the people had wanted initially in terms of oversight? Well, remember, the Department of Justice does not represent the city of New Orleans. They're in the other party in this proceeding. So we were talking to them just to let them know what we're seeing going on. But we were talking very specifically with the mayor and with the city attorney about what our needs. So the city, we don't feel that the city of New Orleans represented us appropriately in these negotiations. And so that's why we want to make sure the judge hears our voice. Susan, what was done in Los Angeles with regard to beefing up the police monitor there when the consent decree came down there? Yeah, so there are specific provisions that say the city will make sure that this office has the resources that it needs. If you read this consent decree, it just says that the NOPD will have whatever resources it needs to comply with the consent decree. Well, that should say also the police monitor's office. So um, in Los Angeles, that provision was in the consent decree. Additionally, the, it's called the inspector general's office out there, but we had a lot of duties within the consent decree as well. And that's the power of reporting to a federal judge as to how the department is doing. We don't really have that under this consent decree. So, and it really touches on areas that we are very integrally involved in, and that's complaints and complaint investigations and then shooting investigations. We roll out to the scene of all of them. Um, we don't need a federal monitor and a, a local monitor to roll out to the scene of all these shootings. We're there from start to finish, as we were in the Allen case and in the Justin Sipp case. So um, we just we, we feel like we were left out of this. I've got, got a last quick question to you. you. You talk about Los Angeles, the same setup that was there. How long did it take to implement and was funding a problem to get it done? It took them a while, um, so they had to budget for a number of the issues, so things like cameras were, were a problem, so the city had to make priorities, and that'll have to be done here. Um, one of the priorities in Los Angeles was making sure that they had enough officers on the street at all times. So it took them a little while to do things like put up cameras in all the cars. So it, it, it's a budget priority, and that's something the city and the uh, council have to sit down and, and, and work with, but um, we just want to make sure our voice is heard again in this document, and we don't feel like it is. All right, Susan Hudson, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. And coming up